Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, unless you're a member of the Flat Earth Society or the Ray Pete forums, then you probably already accept the scientific consensus behind DHT's proven role in the progression of androgenic alopecia. This isn't theoretical. We even have ex vivo data which proves that hair follicles that are exposed to DHT will get destroyed by it if they are genetically sensitive to the androgenic alopecia gene. However, there is one strange phenomenon that hasn't been explained very well to this point, and I like to call this phenomenon the DHT age paradox. The reason I bring this up is because one of the most common questions I get is whether finasteride loses its effectiveness with age. Since androgenic alopecia is due to the trash hormone DHT, you would think that hair loss might become less severe and less of a problem as men get older since the levels of testosterone decrease with age, and since DHT is just a worthless metabolite of testosterone, it's not surprising that DHT levels also decrease with age. That is what brings us to the DHT age paradox. Despite this decrease in DHT with aging, older people with androgenic alopecia don't suddenly start growing back their hair. In fact, many continue to have their hair loss progress at a normal or an even accelerated rate. There are even people who don't seem to have androgenic alopecia at all when they are younger who then go on to develop thinning hair when they are in their 50s or their 60s or even older. Now, this, of course, doesn't happen to everybody. There are plenty of examples of older men whose hair is just as thick as it was when they were teenagers, like David Bowie, Willem Dafoe, and Tom Cruise, who all continue to maintain their full head of hair even into their 50s, 60s, and 70s. But there are other people who seem to lose their hair just from getting old, even though older men have lower levels of DHT than younger men do. This particular kind of hair loss has been called senile alopecia, also known as senescent alopecia. Oftentimes, you will hear this term used to describe androgenic alopecia as it occurs in older men, but actually, there has been a lot of controversy in the medical literature over whether it is something separate from androgenic alopecia entirely, or whether or not it is just androgenic alopecia that gets worse with aging. After all, we know that one of the reasons why it's important to start finasteride early in life is that even though finasteride does regrow hair in about 60% of people who use it, it is most effective at preventing you from losing hair in the first place. So, the later you start finasteride, the less effective it is going to be for you, especially if you start it when you've already lost significant ground, and I talk about all of this in my Why Finasteride Stops Hair Loss Forever video, which I'll go ahead and link below. To sum up my conclusions from that video, though, finasteride doesn't seem to be as effective later in life than it is earlier in life, which again is surprising since there is less DHT later in your life. The other reason to start finasteride earlier in life rather than later is that the longer you have had androgenic alopecia, the more likely you will have irreversible changes to the hair follicles on your scalp. The end stage of androgenic alopecia beyond just simple miniaturization of the hair follicles is for the follicles and the capillaries that supply blood to the follicles to die off and then be replaced by scar tissue. Once that happens, you're pretty much screwed because there is no turning back the clock. There is no known treatment available today that can reverse that process once that has happened. A hair transplant, of course, is still an option, but keep in mind that a hair transplant doesn't actually give you any net increase in hair. It just moves hair from one region of the scalp to another, so preventing hair loss with pharmaceuticals will always be a better option than losing ground and then getting a hair transplant, especially since there's no guarantee that hair transplant is going to look good. Now, of course, it is very important to remember that when I say that the blood supply to the follicles dies off, I'm not talking about the blood flu theory. The blood flu theory states that the blood supply is restricted first, and then the hair follicles die. What happens in reality, though, is that the hair follicles die first, and since there are no hair follicles, the blood supply decreases as a result. The blood flu theory is an old-fashioned, outdated theory that was disproven literally over a century ago, and if you want to know more about that theory, I've made several videos that I'll go ahead and link below that discuss that in detail. But getting back to what happens to our hair when we get old, the question still remains as to why hair loss progresses even though DHT levels fall as we get older. Is there some mechanism of hair loss that is not related to androgenic alopecia and is just due to aging? Well, it's not that crazy of an idea that the characteristics of hair change with age. After all, we all know that hair turns gray with age, and the reason that happens is because there is a finite store of the pigment called melanin, which is associated with each hair follicle. And after about 10 complete hair cycles, the melanin gets all used up, so hair then turns gray. So the longer you live, the more likely you are going to go gray. It has also been shown that in men and women, other characteristics of hair change with age. For example, the diameter 
diameter of the hair shafts in women increases until about the age of 40, and then it slightly diminishes over time. The same sort of thing happens in men as well, but the peak in hair diameter occurs at an earlier age, unfortunately for us. So, given the fact that hair changes quality with age, it's no surprise at all that the first studies on senescent alopecia done in the 1980s felt that senescent alopecia was a distinct cause of hair loss separate from androgenic alopecia. For example, in this study right here, scalp biopsies were performed on men with androgenic alopecia and on men with hair loss that didn't start until they were at least age 50. The biopsies in the men with androgenic alopecia had the typical hair follicle miniaturization that is the hallmark of androgenic alopecia. However, the men with so-called senescent baldness had a reduction in the size of hair follicles and more hair in the telogen resting phase than in the control subject without the miniaturization seen in androgenic alopecia. The study concluded, quote, senescent baldness and male pattern baldness are clearly different processes, unquote. But not every researcher who has studied senescent baldness has felt that it is any different from just plain old-fashioned androgenic alopecia. In other words, starting to go bald when you're over 50 might just be one end of the spectrum of androgenic alopecia. After all, there are over 250 genes associated with androgenic alopecia, so it can progress at different rates depending on genetics. Some people have very aggressive androgenic alopecia, and they start losing their hair in their mid-teens, while maybe others just have very slow onset of androgenic alopecia that doesn't start until they are older. In contrast to the study we just showed, the author of the study that was published in 2011 felt that there really was no such thing as senescent alopecia. He felt it was completely fictional. In other words, it's all just androgenic alopecia that we confuse for senescent alopecia sometimes. In the study, 2,149 scalp biopsies were done in men and women of different ages, and they were examined for features of androgenic alopecia. The researchers found that the ratio of terminal hairs to vellus hairs was similar in subjects over 50 versus younger subjects. Only 2% of the subjects had diffuse hair loss without miniaturization, which would be more in line with what other researchers call senescent alopecia. The study concludes by saying, quote, it can be inferred from the analysis outlined here that the most significant hair loss in the elderly is androgen-driven. The few patients with deteriorating diffuse alopecia appear to be the exception. Old age may not be a significant cause of hair loss. Where there is life, there is hope." Unquote. So that's kind of a weird way to end the study, but thanks for the note of optimism, I suppose. So this last study implies that most hair loss in the elderly is just ongoing androgenic alopecia, which seems like a reasonable conclusion. But that's not the end of the story here, Chooms, because there is now evidence from molecular biology that androgenic alopecia and senescent alopecia are in fact two distinct entities. This study here is titled, quote, Microarray analysis of androgenetic and senescent alopecia. Comparison of gene expression shows two distinct profiles. Unquote. In this study, three groups of men were compared. One group was a control group with no hair thinning. The second group was men with androgenic alopecia who had started losing their hair before the age of 30. The third group was men who had diffuse hair thinning that started after the age of 60, so they were the one who supposedly had senescent alopecia. All the men had scalp biopsies and RNA that was extracted to assess gene expression. Well, it turns out the gene expression was very different in people with androgenic alopecia versus those who had senescent alopecia. The authors of the study say, quote, our data showed that the androgen receptor is upregulated in androgenic alopecia, but not in senescent alopecia, unquote. This makes sense since people with androgenic alopecia have been found to have increased amounts of androgen receptors in their scalps. On the other hand, there was a completely different gene pattern in senescent alopecia. The article says, quote, in contrast to androgenic alopecia, the 15 genes unique to senescent alopecia participate in skin and epidermal development, keratinocyte proliferation differentiation, and cell cycle regulation, unquote. So these are completely different gene abnormalities from what we're used to seeing in androgenic alopecia. So the bottom line here is that there is evidence that senescent alopecia or senescent hair loss is a totally different condition than androgenic alopecia. Though, of course, there must be many people who have both of these conditions at the same time. So basically, this senescent alopecia may very well or at least partially explain why finasteride may not be as effective in older men compared to younger men, and it may also explain why hair loss continues to progress as we get older, even though androgen levels decrease naturally with age. So because of this, men who are older and not experiencing the same degree of success with finasteride may want to consider adding topical minoxidil to their daily hair loss prevention stack. Minoxidil's mechanism of action is not related to androgens, rather it is just a non-specific 
lipid growth stimulant, which will work to promote hair growth through a mechanism that is unrelated to suppressing DHT. So to further elaborate on this whole age-DHT paradox thing, our good friend Dr. Truib, who is the Morden Solis of the hair loss industry, published a thorough review article on hair aging in 2018. In this article, he says, quote, Since there is a decrease in 5-alpha reductase activity in senescent alopecia, efficacy of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors decreases in men after the age of 60 years. Given that minoxidil exerts its effect independent of androgen metabolism and fibrosis is not a feature of senescent alopecia, minoxidil works well in these men who have retained some hair, unquote. He then shows some examples of hair regrowth with topical minoxidil in both men and women with senescent alopecia. So, with senescent alopecia, you are not fighting against the trash hormone DHT. Therefore, minoxidil is the best treatment available, and if you only have senescent alopecia, it is likely you could even use minoxidil effectively as a monotherapy and not even bother using finasteride at all. Of course, it is entirely possible and even likely for people to have both androgenic alopecia and senescent alopecia, so the combination of minoxidil and finasteride would still be necessary to combat hair loss from multiple angles. So I realize that most people following my channel are probably young people, and therefore they won't have to worry about things like senescent alopecia for a good while from now, but eventually we are all going to face aging in addition to hair loss. I think it is likely by that time we'll have some alternative treatments to what we have now, and not just for hair loss, but for anti-aging treatments in general. There's a lot of very interesting work being done on the anti-aging frontier, which should help preserve not only our skin, but our hair as well, and possibly even extend the human lifespan so that we can all live long enough to see the development of interstellar travel, and then we can colonize a planet in the Proxima Centauri star system. I may be a middle-aged man, but I intend to live forever, and even when I am 1,000 years old, I won't accept being bald, and I hope neither any of you chooms will either. So, until until next time, God bless.